Hey GP learners, do you know the best webcam to use if you're thinking about doing video consultations with your patients? In this episode I'm going to walk you through the various different options you can consider and show you the pros and the cons of them and which one you really want to think about using. Let's tech enhance your primary care and learning. If this is the first time we're meeting, I'm Dr Gandalf of EGP Learning where I look at supporting you with technology enhanced primary care and learning. And in this episode, I'm going to show you the various different types of webcams you can consider using if you're looking at doing video consultations with your patients and what you want to think about. First question I always get is, can't I just use the webcam that's in my laptop or built into my computer? You can, and it's possibly an option, but I'm not a big fan of using that, partly because they are fixed onto the laptop or whatever device you're using, and sometimes getting a good image as a result of that may not work so well. The other part of using onboard laptop webcams and stuff is the built-in microphone may not always be the best thing. And it's important you've got good audio as well. And that's a real key thing that we need to look at. As well, because it is integrated, trying to get a good image in terms of you being able to see the screen and patient being able to see you in the video may not always work so well. So sometimes having a separate device that you can position to however you feel best definitely more effective. And think about this, when you look at engaging with other people that have a built-in webcam on their laptops and stuff, you kind of sometimes looking up their nose, not a great picture is it? So I tend to recommend people use a separate webcam as a result of that. And to look at that, I've got three different webcams that I've got that I'm going to suggest as options for you. I'm going to talk about the Logitech C920. Now many of the EGP learners will know I'm a massive fan of this webcam and I've got it right here. So this is it. Um, and this is my go-to webcam for pretty much everything. Records in high definition, has great bilateral microphones that mean that it, it picks up the sound really quickly and effectively, and it's good quality. The cable is nice and long, so using it in practice means that you can actually plug this into any computer easily and effectively, and it has no onboard storage. So the IT departments generally don't have a problem with this because there's no storage and stuff. And that's a key thing I would recommend for any webcam that you're looking at using. And it's the reason as well to avoid some of the higher end stuff like DSLR cameras and that kind of stuff because the moment you have onboard storage it becomes an issue. This goes for approximately £50 on average, although if you get it on bargain you can get it for about £20-£30 which is what I got this one for, £20 on Amazon Prime Day. And I do think this is one of the, the best webcams. I'm going to show you the, the images that you get from this shortly. If you are after something a little bit cheaper, you've got two options to consider. So first is its little brother, which is the C270. So this is it. Very similar looking webcam. Um, the cable's just the same length as well. Uh, it doesn't record in high def specifically. It records in 120p. Um, so that's just between normal definition and high definition. Is that a big issue? Nah, not really, to be honest. Um, and this retails for about 20 pounds or so on average. So it is a typically a cheaper webcam. The audio is pretty decent and again we're going to show you what that looks like shortly but it's a good alternative and from a verified brand so I do like it for that reason. If you do want even cheaper still then consider using something called the Derry Cam. so that's this one. So I got this for £17 off Amazon and um, it works really well. The lighting slightly less quality compared to the other two cameras that I mentioned. Key thing with all of these is that they have good length cables, so this allows you to connect it really effectively and easily. And they all have this ability for you to pull it out and attach it onto a desktop if you need to. So for example, you can put it on top of the monitor, on top of the laptop, as you feel best. And that can be a good option to do. What I do suggest people consider though, and particularly if you are looking at using this in various different environments, is that you do invest in a simple tripod doesn't have to be something big or expensive but just a small little thing so you can get better positioning something like a Gorillapod so these go for about £10 or so if you do want to go for something fancy you can go for something a little bit more like the SwitchPod this is something that I've had for a while I love using it I don't use this for video consultations though because I use this more for my recording so just stick with the Gorillapod to be honest and you can position this how when you need and you put the webcam on top and it sits quickly and effectively less keyboard transmission because of the insulation of the pads and stuff and it just means you get a good visual for the webcam and you may be thinking why is that important well for example if you're doing video consultation in a clinic room like this you want to make sure there's nothing in the background that picks up inappropriate images so checking your background is important but being able to position it so that you can get a good background image and stuff is very important again being able to position the webcam in such a way not looking up your nose 
really important, not a nice image. Don't really want that to be what the patient's looking at when they're looking at you. And it just means you get nicer quality engagement from my perspective. In terms of placement, make sure it's somewhere that is visually easy for you to look. So for example, when I do video consultations, I would have the webcam here on my desk, pointing towards me, getting a good image. And the reason for that is, it's important to remember that when you look at the webcam, that's as if you're looking at the patient. When you look at the screen, they may get a disconnect because of the lack of engagement. And you see this when you do things like WhatsApp calls with your friends and family. They're looking at the screen, they're not looking at you, slightly a bit of a disconnect. I've covered this in my top five tips of video consultations. You're welcome to see that video. Ping it up right now. However, I'm going to now show you what these webcams actually look and sound like so you can get a clear picture of what they do and how they do it and then you can decide which one you think is best for you. If you are interested, there are going to be affiliate links down below. I do get a slight amount if you do purchase through that, but no extra cost to yourself. And obviously, if you don't want to do that, you can just search for them and find them however you prefer. Google's obviously a good way of doing so. Anyway, shall we get straight to that video? Let's go. So EGP learners, this is what a video consultation would look like if I was to use my inbuilt webcam on my Surface Pro. Now I don't have one on my desktop because most desktops don't tend to have an inbuilt webcam. Although some of the newer ones like the Macs and that kind of stuff do. However, this is what it looks like. And as you can see, it's a rather fixed image that we've got because it's the diagonal location of my screen itself. Um, this may be an issue sometimes. It's actually a really good quality camera. I must admit that point and the color saturation and the visuals of it, really impressive. And you're gonna see a comparison of this in a second. A little bit of tints of reds on the side and stuff, but yeah. And this is using the inbuilt audio of my service, Surface. So it's not too bad. We can now have a look at the C920. So this is the C920. This is positioned on my switch pod and it's literally just above my webcam one so it's slightly higher and the usual visuals as a result of that is slightly different as you can see the color saturation a little bit less compared to my um, surface one is that down to the lighting and stuff well i've got the same lighting in the same room the autofocus though is pretty good and the high quality definition very good and this is the audio that you're listening to from my c920 as well what do you think next up we're going to go to the dairy cam. so in this one i've got the dairy cam um, as you can see, it's got a wider angle lens, so it kind of has this bowing kind of picture. And I'm not a big fan of it personally when I'm doing video consultations, but for things like online conferencing and stuff, that can be actually quite useful because you can get a wider picture of the room. And it does give you that more depth kind of look. And um, the audio, tell me what you think. Does it sound okay? Does it not sound okay? Mm. I think the image quality, a little bit darker still, similar to the C920, um, and a slightly fuzzier. And this is on HD settings, so this is as good quality image as it can do. What do you think? And this is our last webcam. So this is the C270. As you can see, the quality of the image is much lower. This is partly because I have had to expand the image on the screen so it's not going any blackout because it does record in 120 by 720p, so not HD effectively. If I was to take it back to its normal kind of density, this is kind of what it would look like as a result of that. But I'm going to take it back to our full screen kind of image. Um, the other thing to remember about the C270 as well is that unlike the other two webcams that I showed you, it doesn't actually have a screw-on base to allow you to put it onto a tripod. So as you can see here, this is what the Derry Cam looks like on a tripod. It has a little thing that allows it to stick in. If I take that off for you right now, you'll be able to see that there's a little screw just here. And there we go. So this, the C270 doesn't actually have this. It only has this kind of stick-on plate that allows it to hook onto the um, laptop effectively there. So there we go. So this little plate and this part, that's all it has to hook on. Um, so it's not as stable. And as a result of that, it's a bit harder. You can maneuver it, which is better than I think the inbuilt webcam like this. But as a result of that, it's not as functional, I think. Um, and as you can see, the image quality nowhere near as good. Audio. Tell me what you think. Is this what you would like to hear when you were consulting with somebody? I know. So we're now going to look at all of these combined. Ooh, wow. Let's see what this looks like, shall we? Um, just a quick point. The C270 will not be there because my output input doesn't allow me to do that effectively, I'm afraid. And just because of the number of USBs I've got going in, I'm afraid I couldn't record the audio live. So I've had to do that separately, which is why you're going to see some weird images. But at least it'll give you a flavor of what the um, visual looks like compared to the audio and that kind of stuff. There again is a slight lag on each of them because I'm having to daisy chain three different USBs into one PC. Shall we have a look? 
So EGP learners, I'm using a separate microphone to record this audio and on the visuals in the bottom left hand corner you've got my EGP learning banner, the top left corner you've got the Dericam, top right corner you've got the Surface Pro and the bottom right hand corner you've got my C920. Now as I mentioned there is a slight lag on some of them that's because I am daisy chaining these kind of things but you can see the responsiveness of the different cameras to each other's and seeing that the C920 is a bit better at balancing movement and light adjustment compared to the other two. What do you think? Also I'm keen to know what you think about having a separate microphone to record the audio because that can be something that some people consider particularly if you're looking for better quality and this is using my Blue Yeti which many of you know I've used for my videos and stuff. Let me know in the comments what you think. So that's a summary of the various different webcams. Let's bring this together shall we? So EGP learners, that was my roundup of the various different webcams that you can consider using for video consultations. What did you think? I guess in terms of summary for me, the Inbert one is pretty good and it's a perfectly standby option if you're using laptops and stuff. However, if you are having to consider desktops, it's then a question of which kind of webcam you're going to consider. For me personally, Derrycam, although it gives you good quality imagery and stuff, I'm not a great fan of it. I think there are better options as you're about to see. So I'm going to leave that one to the side. I think it is a tie for me between the C270 and the C920 HD. And the reason for that is the image quality of the C920 is far above the C270. However, the audio does seem to be better on the C270. And whether that's down to my particular room, because I do have some aircon going in here, or not, I don't know. But on balance, the audio is very important. And actually, how important is the image quality compared to what you can see? Less of an issue, if I'm being honest. However, the fact that this doesn't allow you to put it onto a separate tripod is a real frustration for me. And that's why it is a tie between the two different webcams. I think it does come down to what's more important, the image or the audio. Your alternative option is to use the webcam with a separate mic microphone. And, and that can be a really valuable option. Many of you do know I'm a big fan of separate microphones because it does give you higher quality audio. And it allows you to speak more naturally and more effectively as well. And particularly if you're using headsets and stuff when you're consulting, even better using an inbuilt microphone with your headset much better option in my view so yeah probably the c920 just for the imagery and for the portability use but which do you think i'd love it if you could let me know in the comments and tell me what your view is and which one you're going to look at for your practice or for your method of working whether it's remote working or individual and stuff in practice when it comes to video consultations moving forward quick comment EGP learners if you did want any of this equipment there are links to these in the show notes and they are affiliate links so if you do use them I do get a small amount back from the companies but at no extra cost to you clearly if you don't want to do that feel free to just google or go to Amazon whichever platform you prefer I hope this video has been really useful for you guys and as always feel free to contact me whichever method or platform you prefer whether it's Facebook Instagram Twitter LinkedIn don't really mind but feel free to do so if you are listening on the podcast i hope you found this useful apologies it has been a slightly more visual episode for you but do feel free to go have a look on our youtube channel where you can see the whole thing in detail and as always if you do so make sure you subscribe ring that bell get notified of all of our content first and foremost and definitely leave a comment i guarantee you i will give you a reply as always egp learning is here to help save you and your patient's time by tech enhancing primary care and learning catch you in the next episode